Hello! I've got a bit of a special treat today. We're going to be playing with a sealed new in box graphics card from the mid 1980s. It's a Video 7 Vega Deluxe, and it belongs to the class of graphics cards often known as Super EGA cards. Whereas standard EGA cards only went up to a resolution of 640x350, the Vega Deluxe claims a top resolution of 640x480. To allow you to actually use these resolutions, it comes with drivers for Windows, AutoCAD, Lotus 123, and a bunch of other software. So there should be plenty of stuff for us to test today, assuming I can find a monitor capable of displaying these weird resolutions. Let's get into it. Before we get started though, I'd just like to give a shout out to PCBWay, who have provided circuit boards for all of my projects for over three years now, and who I've been using since before I was even sponsored by them. If you need some boards manufactured, I can highly recommend them, their quality is top notch. New users get $5 off their first order, and as a batch of 5 boards is only $5, you basically get them for the postage cost. Their assembly services are extremely reasonably priced at $30 for up to 20 boards, and they also offer 3D printing, CNC machining, and injection moulding services. I've made extensive use of their services over the years, and they always do great work. If any of that sounds useful to you, then head over to PCBWay's website, there's a link in the video description. So without further ado, let's open this up. Now, um, I know some people are really against opening up old sealed hardware like this, but I'm not one of these people. I think hardware should be used, but don't worry, I'll be keeping very good care of the box once I get it open. I'll look after the card, all that kind of stuff. And if there's any driver discs inside, I'll read them in and uh, post them up to the internet archive. All right, here we go. This is the first time this has been opened since the 1980s. There we go, we've got a user's manual. All right, and inside we have the card itself. Looks like it's using a Chips and Technologies chipset. Now, just as an aside, the chipset it's using is the CS8240. This was one of the very first third-party EGA chipsets, and it's used in loads of different EGA cards from different manufacturers. Curiously, however, the Vega Deluxe appears to be the only Super EGA card that uses this chipset, and I don't think that Video 7 have used any additional hardware to achieve this. In fact, the board looks identical to the earlier Vega card, so I suppose Video 7 must be doing some software trickery to get the higher resolution modes. This means that we might be able to use the Vega Deluxe BIOS and utilities to give Super EGA capabilities to other cards using the same chipset. I've dumped the BIOS and utility disk to the internet archive, and I'll give you a link below. Anyway, back to the unboxing. A bunch of little dip switches here. These are presumably to set the video mode, because I believe the, the chipset in this, as well as supporting EGA, it can also pretend to be a Hercules card, as well as you can kind of lock it to the lower resolution modes if you don't have a good enough monitor. And these will be composite video out. And then, of course, the uh, monitor connector. Excellent. Have a quick look at the user's manual. All right, excellent. We have a five and a quarter inch floppy with presumably the drivers and stuff. Um, our user's manual. <laughs> Warranty response card. I wonder if I filled this in, it would actually go anywhere. Guaranteed our Vega Deluxe will be compatible with these video modes. For some reason it doesn't, we'll make it work or we'll refund the purchase price. <laughs> okay, so maybe we'll try calling this number if we can't get it to work, see if there's anybody still there. So the switch settings, you get to put it in a different modes. These are just the switches on the back of here. That's cool. This all looks pretty easy to set up. So these are the computers I'm going to be testing it on. Um, this is my Amstrad PC1640. Um, it's the one I did a lot of previous experiments uh, on different types of video cards in it. I'll give you a link to the video below and above. The other machine is, if you, you'll know it from previous episodes as well, it's my Retro Rocket PC. It's sort of like the fastest PC I could reasonably build that still had a fully functioning ISA slot in it. I've used it for quite a lot of projects. It's just, it's, it's useful because it's got, you know, ISA slot and a bunch of other old ports, but it's quick enough that it can run Windows XP, so I can still transfer files back and forward pretty easily between it and modern machines. Let's just slide that on in there. All right, everything's connected. Let's see if it blows up. Something happened. Hmm, maybe not. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, amazing. It's even in color. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So I guess the BIOS must uh, default to using EGA stuff only. I'll try some Monkey Island. Looks, pr looks very nice. Yeah, this looks actually really good. Looks great on this monitor, actually. <laughs> that's a lovely EGA sunset. Oh, okay, so Monkey Island plays great in EGA mode on this ridiculously overpowered PC. Wonderful. I'll try Monkey Island 2, because it, it, I believe, has an EGA mode. Yeah, it looks surprisingly good in EGA, actually. I mean, there's a lot of dithering going on, but that, that looks great on a monitor like this. I've got to say, it's a very, very nice looking game, even in EGA. <laughs> Love this bit. Even if you try to walk away, he still finds you. I've never played through it in EGA mode before, but maybe I should sometime. CGA game. Yep, yeah, all looks very good. So CGA is working fine too. 
So I'm going to try something I haven't actually tried before, and that's a program called Fast Doom. Now, obviously, Doom doesn't normally run on EGA graphics cards, but a very clever individual called Viti95 has uh, released this port of Doom that uh, can run on a wide variety of crazy graphics configurations, including this, hopefully. Oh yeah, look at this! <laughs> this is great. I've never tried it, this before because uh, I've never had an EGA card in a computer this good before. Oh, this is amazing. It's running absolutely butter smooth. This is great. This is, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, this is so cool considering it's coming out of an EGA monitor. Try a different level. You could totally complete the game like this. I mean, you wouldn't want to, but you know, still. So yeah, I think we can say this graphics card works pretty well. Now I could spend forever playing EGA games on this ridiculously overpowered PC, and I just might. But for the moment, uh, I think it's probably best if we move on to investigating some of the unique features of this particular EGA card. Neither of these machines currently has a five and a quarter inch floppy installed, however, so I think what I'll do is I'll put one into this machine, I've been meaning to do that anyway, and then copy the disk, and then I can just stick it on this one through the GoTech or, or maybe on a compact flash card. So it looks like I've got a few to choose from. I think Tayak are supposed to be a pretty reputable vendor, so I'll maybe go with them. In this case, I was one of those delightful uh, screwless systems from the late 90s, or perhaps early 2000s. I don't need to find any screws, however, I'm pretty sure these are going to break off at a moment's provocation, so I'll have to be careful. This is connected up to my capture card. Okay, let's see what we have. Oh, there we go, yeah. All right, let's just copy all this onto the SD card so we can extract it later. We've got a lot of options. We've got Vega, CGA, HTC emulation, and screensaver. That might be fun. I suppose we'll wait for the screensaver now. What do we reckon? Flying toaster, some sort of 3D maze, maybe some rotating text. Well, if you had blank screen, you were right. I also can't figure out how to get out of this. <laughs> I'll just reboot. Add Vega Deluxe high-res drivers to Microsoft Windows diskettes. So cool, that'll be, I think, Windows 2.0. And install VGA modes and Vega Enhanced Modes driver. Oh, I think that might be for the high-resolution text modes, perhaps. I'm back on the real monitor again, and I want to see if it can do these higher-resolution text modes on a real monitor. So, we do not have a multi-sync monitor, in fact. If I select that, then there's a possibility it might actually damage the display, but we'll see. So we have an enhanced display. And you get these extra options that you can't normally do with a EGA screen. 80x25 and 80x43, I believe, are already possible on most EGA cards, but it's these 120x25, 120x43, by and 132x25 ones that really interest me. So let's try this 120x25. Oh, that works perfectly. So we now have 120 horizontal characters. Now, I would guess that these are 9 by 14 character cells. That'll be a resolution of 1080 by 350. So that's way more than you can normally get with, I think, most EGA cards. And um, I think this is one of the modes that's supported by some Super VGA cards. Let's try 120 by 43. Now, this is presumably the exact same resolution, or very close to it. Um, but I guess this is probably using uh, 9 by 8 character cells instead of 9 by 14. So that lets us get a bunch of extra rows, but it means the 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 letters don't look quite so nice. Uh, let's try the biggest one, 132 by 25. And now, interestingly, this one says that it works on the color display, so it should work on standard CGA monitors as well. But that must mean it's a 15 kilohertz signal, so presumably only 200 lines. So this will be an 8 by 8 font then, which means it'll be running at 1056 by... 200. So yeah, even if you don't have a multi-sync monitor, these Super EGA cards might even be useful to you. Uh, let's see if I can type all the way to the end. Yep, we're going straight off the end of the screen. See that? That's pretty cool, actually. High resolution text mode on a standard EGA monitor. So yeah, it looks like we can increase the horizontal resolution no problem, but this card's real party trick is being able to increase the vertical resolution, i.e. the number of lines. However, standard EGA monitors like mine can't normally display more than 350 lines. I don't even want to try because it might cause damage. Monitors that can display more lines are often called multi-sync monitors, and sadly I do not possess one. I do however have a few options for converting EGA signals to VGA, so hopefully one of those will work. This is an MCE2 VGA by Luis Antoniosi, which is a great device, but unfortunately doesn't support any Super EGA resolutions. It's open source though, so it could probably be made to, but FPGA programming is not a skill I possess. In my last videos about EGA, I used this, which is a GBS8200 RGB upscaler board, originally designed for arcade monitor conversions and whatnot. I've also added this GBS control board, which allows you to tweak it way more than with the stock firmware, and also, crucially, allows it to sync to EGA signals. With any luck, this will also work with the weird high-resolution EGA that our video card spits out. 
The final piece of the puzzle is this EGA to RGB converter board that I built in my last video about EGA. Since I made that video, I've found a few nearly identical projects on GitHub that are far better than mine, so I'll give you a link to them below. But the question is, can the GBS sync to the high resolution modes? Now I've already installed Windows 2.0 along with the high resolution drivers that came from the Vega driver disk, but I've no idea if the GBS will sync to this mode, so let's see. Okay, it's something there. Try flipping the polarity. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Ah, oh, amazing. Ah, oh, I've got a mouse and everything. Wonderful. Uh, let me just adjust the screen geometry. Wonderful, look at that. All right, yeah, we've got, uh, let's get paint. Yeah, this is 640 by 480. This looks very similar to the VGA mode of Windows 2.0. Obviously it's not. I don't know how you change the colors or anything in this version of paint. But if we've got a control panel, screen colors. Uh, uh, no, I think this mode is certainly 16 colors, but I don't know if it can do the full 64 color palette of normal high resolution EGA, so. Um, but there might be one program that will tell us that. This is PC Paintbrush 4, and PC Paintbrush was known for coming with drivers for every oddball graphics card. So I think there's a fair chance that we can find this one in it somewhere. Let's see. Oh yeah, look! Video 7 Vega Deluxe. That's exactly what we have. All right, so that's interesting. That gives us a list of the available modes. So 640 by 480 in 248 or 16 color, and also 752 by 410 in the same range of colors. That doesn't tell us if it's using the full 64 colors or just 16, so let's select... What is it, 316 for the 16 color one? Yeah, there we go. Now, in the palette options, yeah, so we have four levels of red, so it is using the full uh, 64 color ability of the EGA, so that's really good. So that's 640 by 480, 16 color, but being able to pick it from a palette of 64, so that, that's really good. It's actually quite good graphics capability for the time. Obligatory. Okay, now I'm going to try AutoCAD. Um, you can see that I've downgraded the version of MS-DOS because Windows 98 was having a few compatibility problems. Now, um, the Vega comes with drivers for AutoCAD Release 9. I couldn't find Release 9, but I believe Release 10 has the same graphics driver interface, so I think it should just work. Now, before we try anything, let's see what it looks like on an ordinary EGA card. Okay, so edit an existing drawing. I happen to know it comes with a lovely rendering of the Space Shuttle Columbia, so let's try that first. Yes, seems to be okay. We're missing some of the screen, but that's normal. The GBS doesn't really like to doesn't really like to sync to high resolution EGA. But yeah, that's that's all looks really good. Hopefully we'll be able to bump up the resolution a little bit. Okay, 640 by 480 looks good. Don't know what any of this means. And look at that. <laughs> it's definitely uh, higher resolution. Again, it's gone from 640 by 350 up to 640 by 480. So it's not a huge bump, but um, when you're talking resolutions as low as this, I bet that made a huge difference to a draftsman at the time. Look at some other stuff. Airplane, that sounds interesting. Ooh, an airplane, just as advertised. Ooh, this one's in 3D. I can imagine the extra screen resolution would be very useful for doing 3D especially. Oh wow, look at this. Lots of stuff going on here. Don't know if this is a 3D... Oh wow, I figured out how to rotate it. Look, I'm looking at the house from the side now. <laughs> this is cool. It's all very pretty, but um, I'd like to get a copy of it on paper if possible. I um, wonder what options AutoCAD offers for that. You figure plotter. What is it? Hewlett Packard did some amazing plotters back in the day. Let's see what the options are. Oh, look at that. 7585. <laughs> that was an enormous large format, like A0 plotter. <laughs> I can't imagine many people have one of them lying around. Anyway, here's my HP 7585 large format A0 plotter. It is by a large margin the coolest thing I've ever bought on eBay. What's more, it only cost 99p, plus the cost of the thousand mile round trip to pick it up. That's a big discount on the $23,000 this unit originally cost, which would be more like 75 grand in today's money. Since then I've been slowly fixing it up and I've got it working pretty well. I plan on making a video about it one day, explaining some of the repairs and also how to interface it with a modern computer. But here's a sneak preview. As you can see it's ridiculously fast, the pen can move at 60 centimeters per second, but then it needs to as it's drawing on such enormous pieces of paper. I use these rolls of 3 foot wide paper that are still made by HP themselves, and probably the coolest thing I've made so far is this map of the world made out of a pen rose tiling. Also there was this Wang Dala, but we don't talk about that. Anyway, here's the finished result. AutoCAD certainly seems to be able to drive this thing no problem. I'm not quite sure what to do with this square meter sized drawing of a 1980s house. If you want it, let me know. But I digress. I suppose the last features of this graphics card to try are the high resolution text modes. As well as the previous modes, we have some new multi-display modes that we didn't before. 
We had 132 by 25 before, so I'm not really sure what the difference here is. Maybe it supports more colours or something. But the really useful new modes are the 132 by 43 and 80 by 60, which I imagine would be super useful for word processing and spreadsheets. Let's test that theory. Here's Lotus123 running in EGA mode. This is 80 by 25 text. So not terrible, but if you've got a really big spreadsheet, then that isn't ideal. Like this one goes off the bottom of the screen and let's look at the graph drawing functions. Yeah, see, you know, relatively low resolution. So let's see if the Vega drivers improve that at all. All right, here it is. Looks pretty good, although we're missing a few rows due to the GBS not syncing properly, but that's fine. And as you can see, I can display the entire table of data this time. Also, I can go off to the right, you know, a massive amount, although <laughs> the right right hand side of it's missing thanks to the GBS. Try the graphics mode. You can tell it's much higher resolution than before. In fact, we even seem to have a different font on the y-axis. So yeah, this would be very, very useful for office applications of the time. Another utility it comes with is called Palette Pop, and that lets you, I believe, modify the EGA palette. Oh yeah, look at that. You can select which of the 64 colors each thing is. Let's go colors bright pink on bright purple. Amazing, look at that. Now you can make DOS look like a teenage girl's MySpace page. I'm showing my age there. then. I think we've covered most of the features of this card, but I've scanned the manual and copied the utility disks to the internet archive, so if you want to read more then there's a link in the video description. As I said earlier, I'd be very interested to see if someone can use the Vega Deluxe BIOS and utilities to make a standard CS8240 card into a Super EGA one. However, the extra features of this card probably aren't too useful for most people, other than as a curiosity. As far as I know, there weren't any games released that used any of these weird graphics modes, apart from possibly some very basic VGA games that could use the card's VGA BIOS emulation. Also, getting a picture out of this thing can be a little tricky, although I bet some of the fancy upscalers like your retro tinks and frame meisters and whatnot would do a much better job than this $20 GBS board. Anyway, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, etc, and I'll try and have another video out soon. Catch you next time! As long as I gaze on EGA Sunset I am in paradise